Okay, so in today's video, we're going to get these calipers that I pulled from the, the local yard yesterday. We're going to get these calipers on. Um, we're probably just going to do the front left. That's the only one that's binding up. Um, you can see the, the cross hatch and the rotor's gone, some discoloration, so you can tell that it's binding up in previous videos. You know, I showed that it was extremely hot when I pulled back into the garage. Let me see if you look at this one, so you can still still see the the cross hatching that's in it um, so this one's not really an issue but this front left has been binding up on me the the first piston and the caliper is isn't retracting or it is but it's not retracting like it should be um, so we're gonna go ahead and get this car up on the stands and bleed the bleed the brakes and get this this front caliper cleaned up Okay, now that we've got the car up in the air, we can tell that our lines are at the bottom of the caliper. You know, if we're looking at the, the outside of the caliper, the line's at the bottom. So, the first one that I pulled out, the line was actually at the top of the caliper. So we're going to look at this one. So if we line this up. So there's our... Our, our brake line, our nut for the brake line, or our bolt for the brake line, so we know that this is going to be the caliper. Um, and so, for those of you that are wondering, this caliper actually came out of a Chrysler 300. Um, it was another Chrysler 300 with a Hemi that we found at the, the local U Pull and Pay. Um, so this, this should be an OEM caliper. We're going to take this out. We're going to spray it down with some brake cleaner. Set that there. This stuff should evaporate pretty, pretty quickly, so... here in the sun let all that evaporate while we go ahead and get this one off so these back bolts here are going to be an 18 millimeter bolt we'll go ahead and break these loose really hoping I didn't warp this rotor. It's very possible it, it warped after getting so hot. A brand new rotor, that'd be unfortunate. Okay. So I, I bought this brake bleeding kit. Um, I've actually never used one before. We've always just kind of used a cup and a rubber hose and let them bleed out, but because I'm doing this by myself, I'm not going to have anybody to help pump the brakes. Um, so we're going to give this a try and, and see how that goes. Okay, so... So there we go. So, 
just gonna break that loose right there. So we can get the bleed screw loose and then we'll pop this back on there. Let's see. Let's see how this works. Should be um, should be interesting. goes. I don't know if you can see that. We're at about negative 15 psi. So I can hear it sucking air through now. Yep, and we're gonna pressure drop to zero. So that should be about it. Yep, instantly dropping back down to zero. So that line should be purged. We're still pulling a little bit out, but that's just for residue that's running running back through the lines. different angles so you guys can see better. Oops, so now that we got that line bled, I don't know if you can see right there. So we bled it all through there. We put our little rubber cap back on it. That's it. Now we're gonna take this bottom feed line off. Which I believe that's gonna be an 18 millimeter as well. I lied. Maybe a 16. Four 
Kerstin. Jo. Size is metric and standard. Let's see. It's not a half inch. Nine sixteenths. Nope. So it's got to be this thirteen. Yep, thirteen. I'm gonna take this piece of cardboard here and set it here. That was a lot more brake fluid. It's splattered in my eye a little bit. All right, so now that that's off, See, that's interesting. This one doesn't have copper washer. Are these copper? No, they're not. And you can't even pull them off the threads. Because usually you're supposed to replace these copper sealing washers. But I can't even get that bolt out of there. Yeah. But that's all right, we'll just reuse it. Let's go ahead and finish breaking those, those loose. Or taking off the, the caliper. Bottom, bottom one's off, top one's loose. What I'm going to do now is just come up underneath the bottom of the caliper, give it a good little, little pry. And now we're going to take off the top. holding it up so it doesn't spin off this rotor and land on my toe. Well, I might drop a rotor on my toe too. Let me see. I think I want to use that nut to put it on. So I'll put one of these on for a second. That way this rotor doesn't fall off and break my toe.
start to finish. Drying this off. That's all she wrote. So there's the, the old one. So here's the one that we're going to try to replace it with. I'm going to go ahead and pull it off its guide. clamp. I'll show you what I'm doing here in a second. Um, we're just going to compress these, these cylinders. There we go. I'm just going to use the socket. So all we're doing is just decompressing that, that cylinder. You want to do it slow because if you go too fast, it's just going to decomp or it's going to yeah decompress that other cylinder, being that there's two cylinders. Feels good. They're they're decompressing quite easily. So there's two. We decompress both. And you can see oh, before I need that, I'm gonna need that bell. Put the guide back on it. There's the bottom. That was a pain in the ass. And there's the top. Snug these in place for now. I'm gonna take out my, my 
bolt here. Yeah, see, this one's got the copper, the copper seals, but the other ones, they're not, they're not copper, nor are they removable. It's kind of bizarre. But we're going to go ahead and thread this one back on. Thirteen millimeter. Okay, all right, so same thing for this one. We're going to take our bleed screw off. There was actually quite a bit of sediment built up in the lines. see that down at the bottom of the container but there's some sediment down there so want to do is bleed the rest of the fluid out of this caliper. I'm going to put that on there. I'm just going to pump this. Oh, it seems like it's empty. fluid out. Check that cap, make sure that cap didn't seat down. And, no. This one off. I'm gonna put the short hose on here. Oh, whoa! Wasn't expecting that.
shit. It's kind of bizarre how much fluid I'm pulling out of this. I'm wondering if it's just pulling it from the the other other calipers. I hope not. So now that that's bled, what we're going to do is fill that reservoir back up. That was easier. So now that we've pumped it, I'm gonna pop this off, tighten it back up, and Tough doing it by itself. Got that back on. Okay, now we've got the car started. Let's let's pump these brakes a little bit and see see how it feels. I mean, they're they're tight. Brakes are tight. It's not binding up. I really can't do both at the same time. I wish I could pump the brake and in the rotor and see if it's actually biting, but uh, we'll get it all back together here and see if it, uh, if this caliper is going to seize up. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the recording here and get this cleaned up, get the tire back on and uh, we'll pick up after. So we got this, this front tire back on. Um, I was able to confirm with the wife that the caliper is actually compressing. Um, I had her come out and compress the brakes just to make sure that that rotor was was biting up and, and holding. Um, so we're gonna take this out for a quick test drive. You know, we check these calipers. The calipers Oh night and day. Look at that. I can even touch the caliper. It's warm. Rotor's hot, so it's definitely breaking. But I don't feel heat just emanating emitting off this side of this tire. 
feels good. Yeah, they're about the same. So I think that resolved our issue. It's exciting. Well, thank you everybody for watching and I hope to see you guys in the next one.